Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 8th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the problems that often happens in security is people dismissing security features because they are not perfect, because there are ways to bypass the security feature. And well, to be honest, probably that's true for every single security feature out there. And one example that Boyan brings up today is UAC, the user access control. It actually showed up first in Windows Vista and sort of did a little bit of privilege separation between administrating features and normal user features for administrator accounts. Now, as soon as the feature was released, there was a lot of talk about how it can be bypassed, how it's not really perfect in sort of fulfilling its particular role. But truth being told, it does prevent some real attacks and enabling it or actually keeping it enabled isn't really all that difficult and that's sort of and that's what Boyan's diary today is about how UAC actually did get in the way of a pen test that he was conducting. And Apple today released updates for iOS and macOS Mojave. This update mainly fixes the vulnerability in group FaceTime calls that may enable the caller to actually cause the recipient to answer the call. This vulnerability, of course, was highly publicized. Now, Apple actually has a disabled group FaceTime on their server so that mitigated the vulnerabilities and and if you do not apply this update, group FaceTime will remain disabled. If you, for example, have one of the recent iOS beta versions, group FaceTime will still be disabled because these beta versions do not have this patch applied. So while there was a lot of talk about this vulnerability, this isn't necessarily a patch that you need to apply right now unless you really rely on group FaceTime and would like to enable this again. Now, the other reason why you may want to apply this update quickly is it also fixes two additional vulnerabilities for macOS and three additional vulnerabilities for iOS. One of these vulnerabilities is actually related to FaceTime and it fixes a bug in live photos in FaceTime. Now, Apple doesn't really state what the impact of this vulnerability is, but let's assume it's probably some kind of remote code execution by using live photos in FaceTime. The other bugs were actually reported to Apple by Google's Project Zero, and as far as I can tell, are not related to FaceTime. In addition to the iOS and macOS patch, Apple also released an update for Shortcuts, which is a standalone iOS application, and it does fix two privilege escalation vulnerabilities. And talking about video conferencing, Microsoft released a new version of Skype with an interesting feature that allows you now to blur the background in video calls. Now, how well this particular feature works, I think you will have to experiment with for yourself. I haven't had a chance to try it out myself yet, but the idea is if you have things like pictures in the background, maybe a whiteboard with some writing on it, you should be able to blur it so other people on the call will not be able to see it. Interesting feature, but uh, before I would rely on a feature like this, I probably would do some extensive testing first. And Microsoft has released a second advisory for this exchange vulnerability, or really the set of exchange vulnerabilities that we have talked about last week. Now, this new advisory in particular focuses on how to prevent exchange web services from leaking NTLM credentials, which was sort of one component of that particular problem. This is still not a patch, it's really a configuration suggestion in order to prevent this particular part of the exploit. 
And today's also the 10 year anniversary of this podcast. Now I thought about doing something special, but then decided kind of against it because what has really made this podcast possible and made me to actually go to almost 2,500 episodes so far is to keep things simple. So if you like it, uh, well, uh, if I can do it 2,500 times, then maybe you can tell a coworker once about it or tweet about it. I know some of you already do it, but the reason I do it is because people are listening. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.